In this video, I'll be revealing 10 game-changing Notion tips and tricks that will help you become more productive and more organized. Plus, I'm also throwing in some bonus tips that will make you say, I can't believe I didn't know this sooner. Okay, let's jump straight into the video. The first tip is color coding your icons in Notion databases. Now this works particularly well if you are using a task list. So in this example, I've set up a brief little task list. And as you can see, I have a few different icons here and these relate to different types of tasks. So firstly, I have this blue check box icon, which means that this is a work task. I then have this yellow circle icon, which is a personal task. And I've also got this red camera emoji. So this relates to me being a YouTuber. So I like to put in when a YouTube video is going live on my channel. And this icon immediately lets me know that that's what this task is. Now I find this really useful because it shows you at a glance what type of task it is. And it's actually really easy to set up. So you can actually do this using templates. So if you just hover over your database, you'll see this new button in the corner. So if you just click on the arrow here, you can actually add a template by clicking on this new template button. So as you can see, I have a few different templates already. So I'll briefly just show you how to do one. So let's say we want to add a new icon for a fitness task. So it might be something like going for a jog or going to the gym. So I'm going to click on the new template button and that's going to bring up this page. So I'm just going to name this one fitness. And the only thing I'm going to add on here is an icon. So if you just click on this add icon button, it will add one at random. So if you click on here, you can pick one that you like. So you can pick from the emojis or you can use notions icons, which is what I use usually use and you can choose the color of the icon using this button here. So if I click on here, it's going to ask me what color. So I want to make this different to the colors that I've used already. So I think in this case, we're going to go with green. So green is going to stand for fitness and I can also pick an icon that is related to fitness. So I think I'm going to go with this dumbbell icon here. So that's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to add anything else to this template and I'm just going to hit back. And if I now click on this down arrow, as you can see that new template with our new fitness icon has been added. So if I now add a new task into my task list, let's say that I want to go on a morning run, I can just type it in and I'm just going to click on this little button here and that's going to open the page. And then I can simply select which template I want to apply. So in this case, obviously I'm going to pick the fitness one. And as you can see, that's automatically now added our icon for us. Tip number two is creating buttons for repetitive tasks. So in this example, I'm using the exact same task list that I've just shown you. But in this example, I've actually set up this button for the first day of the month. So for me, whenever it's the first day of the month, I have a few specific tasks that I want to complete. It's usually setting goals for the month and reviewing last month's goals. So in the past, it would take me ages to input all of these tasks into my task list every single month. So I actually just set up a button that would do that for me. So if I just click on this button, as you can see, it's just added these tasks for me into the task list. So I've got fill out my YouTube statistics, set new goals, review last month's goals. So this would have taken me a bit of time to add these in, but just with a click of the button, it's automatically done it for me. And I can reuse this button every single month. It will also automatically add the due date as today, which I find really useful. So if you have certain tasks that you do a lot, I would recommend adding a button like this that will automatically add those tasks into your task list. Now I'll quickly show you now how you can set one of these up. So just above the task list, I'm going to type in forward slash button and we're going to grab this button block here. Now it's firstly going to ask you what you want the button to do when you click the button. So in this case, we want to add a page to the database below. So that's the one I'm going to select. So first it's going to ask you which database you want to add the page to. So we're going to select this task list database here. And then it's going to ask you to input the name of the page that you're going to add into this database. So in this case, it's going to be whatever the name of the task is. So for me, it might be review last month's goals. So that's one of the items that I want to add into our table. You can also edit another property. So in this case, I also want to edit the due date so I can set it to today's date. So luckily you can actually just select today. So whenever you click this button, it will automatically add the current date of today as the due date, which is also really helpful. Now, if you remember in the first tip, we set up these templates here to add a color code icon. So you can actually select which one you want to be applied. So this one is actually just a work task. So I'm going to select the new task. So it's automatically going to add that blue checkbox icon for me as well, which is really helpful. And you can add as many different things to the database as you like with just the single click of the button by adding another step. So let's add another one. So as I said, add as many different steps as you like, but I'm just going to add these two for now. And you can also give it a name. So this is whatever you want to actually display on the button. So in this case, it's my first of the month list. So I'm just going to call it first of the month, but obviously depending and whatever it is, you can just give it an appropriate name. And you can also select an icon as well. So I'm going to change the color here back to gray. And let's just go with this calendar icon here to match the example. So once you've added everything in, you can just click done. And now whenever I click this button, it's just going to add those two tasks into our list. 
Tip number three is using pre-made Notion templates. Now, whenever you set up a brand new page on Notion, you'll see this template button here. So if you actually click that, Notion have a ton of pre-made templates that you can download straight into the page. So for example, they have a simple to-do list. They have this projects and tasks dashboard. They actually have a ton of different things. They are really useful, but one thing that I will say is that they are a little bit more simple. So if you are looking for something a bit more advanced, then I would recommend checking out my store as I have a ton of pre-made templates that I've put together. I'm just gonna show you a couple of of them now. The first one is my ultimate second brain template, which is an all-in-one productivity system. It has a really advanced task manager. As you can see, you can rank your tasks based on their priority. You can also see overdue tasks, uh, tasks that don't have a deadline and so much more. It also comes with a project system, goals, a virtual notebook, and even comes with a recipe tracker, a book tracker, and a journal. There is honestly just so much to this template. It took me a long time to put it together. I will leave a link in the description box below if you're interested. I also have some more specific templates like this finance tracker. So you can track all of your expenses and your income. I've even included a monthly budget, a subscription tracker, bill tracker, and transaction reports as well. And if you're into reading, then you might also like my reading tracker where you can track all of the books that you're reading, including the current progress. And you can easily see all of the books that you've completed and it also comes with a book review as well. I will leave a link to my store in the description box. Tip number four is adding a navigation bar to easily navigate between your different Notion pages. So here is a quick little home dashboard that I set up. So as you can see, I have this navigation bar that allows me to navigate between the different pages. So you simply just click on one of the links here and it will take you to that page. So here we are on a habit tracker. So this is all just blank because it's just an example that I set up and you can easily just click between the different pages and this displays at the top of every single page. So this is actually really easy to set up. So I'm just gonna show you briefly how. So we're gonna use a call out block. So I'm just gonna type in forward slash call out and you can choose any background color that you like if you click on the six dots here and select color you can pick whichever background color you like I'm just going to go with gray for this example and if you click here you can choose an icon so you can choose from notions icon library you can upload a custom one if you like or you can use an emoji so in this case I think I'm just going to use the link emoji like this as it's a navigation bar next you just want to type out the name of all of the different pages that you want to link to in your navigation bar so I always like to have a home one so I can easily come back to this home page and I'm just going to type in this line symbol here that you should find on your keyboard and then I'm just going to type in the name of all of these different pages so recipes so now we have the names of the pages all we need to do is add a link so let's start with the recipe one as an example so here is the actual recipe page so what I'm going to do is click on the six dots next to it and I'm going to select copy link I'm then just going to highlight the word recipes here and I'm just going to select this link option here and just paste in the link and that will bring up the page here so I'm just going to select that one so that is now applied so I'm just going to do the exact same for the other one so for habit tracker again I'm just going to copy the link and then just paste it over the top of the word and to copy the link for the actual home page if you click on the three dots in the corner you can select the copy link option here and again I'm just going to paste that over home Okay, so the navigation bar is now all set up. So if I click on, for example, recipes, it will take me to my recipes page. Now, a great idea would be to paste this block onto every single page within your Notion workspace so that you can easily navigate between the different pages. But I am gonna give you a bonus tip here that's gonna make this even easier. And that is to turn this callout block into a synced block. Now, what that means is that if you update one of the navigation bars, all of them will update, which will be super useful if you're adding more pages into your Notion workspace, which you probably will. So to turn it into a synced block, you want to click on the six dots here next to it, select turn into, and we're gonna select synced block. Now you'll know it's a synced block when you see this red outline appearing around it. Next, what we want to do is actually paste it on all of the different pages within our Notion space. So to do that again, I'm gonna click on the six dots here and you'll see this little menu appear here. So it says copy and sync. So that's the one I'm gonna select. Then let's head over to our recipes page as an example, and I'm just gonna paste that link here. Here is our synced block. Again, it's got the red outline, so we know that it's a synced block. So now that it's on this page, let's just add something else on here. So let's just add a book tracker as an example. So I've added this onto our synced block. So let's go now back to our home page, And this was the block that we set up. So as you can see, it's now included that modification that I've just added, and that's because it's a synced block. So it updates all of the different navigation bars if you update just one of them. So it's really useful. Tip number five is using a table of contents block for long pages. So I've just set up a quick example of some notes that I've made on all of the different planets within the 
solar system. Now, when you have pages like this with lots of different notes and lots of different headings, it can take you a while to actually find whatever you're looking for. So what you can do is actually use a table of contents block. So you can just skip to the section of the notes that you actually want to see. So all you need to do is right at the top, I'm just gonna skip to a new line and I'm gonna type in forward slash table like this and look for this table of contents block here under the advanced blocks. So I'm simply just gonna click this block and it's automatically gonna add in our table of contents. So all it does is just pull through all of the headings that you have on the page. So you can then just click on any of these links to jump to the appropriate section. So let's just go with this one and it will jump down to that heading for you. So this is really useful if you use Notion for making notes, especially if you're using it for school or university or anything like that. Tip number six is picking a productivity method and sticking to it. A lot of people build their own productivity systems within Notion and it can be really difficult building one of these from scratch. So the best way to do that is picking a productivity method and then just sticking with it. Now there are tons of videos out there on YouTube covering all of the different methods. Now some of the most popular productivity methods out there are the para method, getting things done, eat the frog and the Eisenhower matrix but there are a lot more out there as well so I would recommend just picking one of these methods and trying to stick to it for a while. Now I briefly mentioned my second brain template earlier but this template actually uses both the para method and the getting things done method so I've combined the two into a really powerful system so it helps you become even more productive. And if you are interested in this template at all, it will be in the description box below. Tip number seven is learning some common Notion shortcuts. So there are actually tons of keyboard shortcuts within Notion that will help you do things quicker. So I'm just gonna cover some of my favorite most used shortcuts in this video, but Notion do have a full guide on their website that I'll link down below where you can view all of the different shortcuts that they offer. So the first one is typing in a colon like this and then the name of an emoji. So let's just do a star emoji and that will then bring up the selectors. So you can just pick whichever one you want. So let's go with this one and that will then add it into the space. The next shortcut is typing the more than symbol like this and then a space and that will insert a toggle for you so you can just type things in your toggle and then open and close it as you please. If you want to add a to-do list block really quickly you can just type two square brackets like this and then a space and that will automatically add in a to-do list block like this so you can then check the task off once it's complete. If you want to link to a page at any point you can type in the at symbol like this and then if you just start typing the page you can then select it from here and that will then add a link into the page so I can just click on this to go to that page. To easily add headings into Notion you can just type a hashtag like this and a space and that will add in a heading block. So if you type in a single hashtag you'll get a h1 heading but if you type in two hashtags like this and a space you'll get a h2 block and if you type in three hashtags and a space you'll get a h3 block. You can type in three dashes in a row like this and it will add in a divider. And if you have a piece of text like this that you want to turn into a different type of block, you can just type in the words forward slash turn at the end of the text and it will ask you what you want to turn this block into. So let's say I wanted this to be a heading. You can also do a similar thing to change the color of the text. So let's say that I want to change the color of this text here to red. I could just type in forward slash color at the end. It will ask me what color I want the text to be. You can also select a background color here as well. So let's go with green. If you already know what color you want the text to be, you could type in forward slash and the color and then it will actually just bring up that exact color and it will then change it to red for you. You can also press the escape key on your keyboard to actually select the block that you're currently in. And then you can also use the arrow keys on your keyboard to move up or down between the different blocks. And if you want to select multiple blocks, you can just hold down the shift key and continue using the arrows on your keyboard to select multiple blocks. So let's say I want to delete all of these blocks, I can just hit delete and they will all disappear. So those are the most common Notion shortcuts that I use all the time. Tip number eight is freezing columns in databases. So this is a Notion feature that still a lot of people don't know about. It was actually added fairly recently. So I think that's the reason why. So here is an example of a really big database table that I have. So this is actually part of my reading tracker template. So this is my master book database where I have all of the different books that I've either read or want to read and a ton of different information about them. And for the ones that I've read, I've got all of this different information. So it's quite a lot of data. But when you get to this part of the database, I can no longer see which book it's referring to which can be a little bit difficult. So luckily you can now freeze columns in Notion. So let's say I want to freeze this first column here. You simply just click on the column and you'll select this freeze up to column option. So now if I scroll along as you can see that column here is now frozen so it never disappears. So I can scroll all the way to the other side of the table and I can still see which book this data is referring to. Now you can actually freeze multiple columns. So let's say I wanted to see the author as well. I can click on this one and freeze up to this column and it's then going to freeze both of those 
columns, as you can see. I'm also going to give you a bonus tip here, which is that you can actually wrap columns with lots of text. So let's say that I also wanted to add a text property on here with a summary of the book. So I'm just going to add a text property here. And this one is going to be just a summary. So I'm just going to paste in a summary of this book. Now this column has been automatically wrapped. So you see all of the text that has been inputted into the box. But as I said, this takes up a lot of space. So what we can do is click on here and unselect this wrap column toggle. So if I switch that off, it now makes this box a lot smaller. So it takes up less room. And if you do want to see the full summary, you can just click on here and it will display it in full. So that's just a handy tip to help clean up your databases. Tip number nine is creating a to-do list box. So this is something that I learned really recently is that you can actually add other other blocks inside a to-do list block. So that's what I've done here. So if I check off this to-do list block here, it will actually strike out everything within the box. So this is really useful if you just want to make a quick note of everything you want to do that day and you don't want to individually select each task. You just want to be able to check everything off all at once. So I will show you briefly how we can set this up. So firstly, we're going to grab a to-do list block. So you can type in forward slash to-do like this and select this to-do list block. You can then give this a name. So in this example, I've just called it today's tasks and I'm adding a colon as well. The next thing we're going to do is give this a background. So it's easier to see that it's a box if it actually has a background color. So to do that, we're going to click on the six dots here, select color, and I'm going to pick a background color. So pick whichever one you like, but I'm going to go with gray. Okay. I'm also just going to highlight this text here and just bold it. So it stands out a little bit more. Now, if you just hit enter, it will go to a new line and add a new box, but that's not what we want. So what you need to do is when you hit enter, you also want to hold down the shift key on your keyboard. So I'm going to hold shift and hit enter, and that's going to allow me to stay with in this to-do list block. And if I do that a few times, it will give me a little bit more space to work with. So let's start adding the tasks. So I'm just gonna add the same ones that I added above. So write blog posts. And if you want to go to the next line, you can either click here or you will again need to hold down shift and enter. So let's just add the next one. So this is now what we have. So now whenever I check this off, it is gonna check everything in the box off. So that's pretty cool. Tip number 10 is to create a home page. So one thing that can be really confusing when you first get started in Notion is actually finding all of the different pages that you've created. You might get excited and start creating a habit tracker, a recipe book, a note taking system, and then suddenly you can't find all of the pages. So one thing that I found really, really helpful is actually setting up a home page. So it doesn't have to be really elaborate. Here is just a really simple home page that I've set up. So I did show you this example earlier. So it's simply where you just list all of the different pages that you have in your system. So you can easily navigate between them and as I showed you earlier, you can even set up a navigation bar to make that even easier. Homepages can be a lot more elaborate though. So as I showed you earlier, my second brain system actually has a really elaborate homepage where I've got an overview of the key databases. So you'll see your task list on the homepage, but you'll also be able to navigate between all of the different pages within your system. I've also got an overview of some other areas in the template as well. I've also previously set up this really fun Studio Ghibli inspired dashboard. So as you can see, there's an area for your to-do list and monthly goals. I've got some fun widgets and images and and even a habit tracker that I've set up as well. So it's really up to you. You can really make it as elaborate or as simple as possible, but I would recommend having a homepage so that it's easy to find everything within your Notion system. And that's it. Remember to check out all of my pre-made Notion templates, including my advanced second brain system over on my store. I'll leave a link in the description box below. And if you did find this video useful, then I'd really appreciate if you could give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel as I post new Notion tutorials like this one every single week.